All right, we're live right now. Okay, so um, we're just gonna dig, jump right into this. Um, earlier in the week, we did like some warm-up stuff, and I would suggest doing that now, like uh, parallel lines, uh, dots between lines, get like your your hand and your arm warmed up. But you can do that directly in what we're doing right now, which I'm gonna have us to be doing some draw-over analysis and side-by-side -side drawing and kind of like learning to use bits and pieces of the tools and the general kind of structure and proportion of the legs. Um, I'm going to be dipping little bits and pieces into, into like anatomy without getting too formal about it. So this is going to be kind of like an overview thing. So in the Discord right now I have um, this file right here, which you can look at for general proportional reference regarding like how many heads have legs are. Don't worry about getting proportions perfect right now. Just keep keep proportions in mind and keep uh, generally the proportions of the thighs versus the leg and the foot. The generic proportions in mind for those. Uh, we're going to be mainly drawing gesture, but also put a little bit of structure here and there, and dip our, bit, dip our toes into bits of like muscle and bone anatomy a bit, but it's mainly like kind of like, the leg is a very complex form, so you kind of have to vibe with something like this for a while before you start digging into a more formalized thing. Like if you want to do a more formalized thing, like, Pro, like Proco is probably the best free resource on that, like Proco leg. Uh, but yeah, Proko got like tons of videos on legs. Like, legs are very complex and they have different parts and stuff. Feet are about as tough to draw as hands, arguably. So feet are we're when we get to feet, we will have a a meeting where we concentrate on feet, pretty much. Um, yeah, simplifying the foot freeze and drawing. That's similar to a simplified structure that I, that I use and stuff. Um, so what I want people doing is I've got uh, these files here and this little file link here. I'll actually link this in. This has like all the all the files in it right here of like the stuff. It has the pure F file. Um, it has like this. Uh, the pure F file is this thing that you're seeing behind here. Um, it's uh, uh, that and like the mood board for it. Like I, I'm, ex this is a giant ass image, and like you might want to modify it depending on like how much how beefy your computer is. So like this is a giant file right here. So you might want to chop it up a bit and like export like only part of it. Like you might want to break it down and make multiple files of the thing, or you might want to just like uh, take in export individual images into a folder from the Pure file. And then you just import the individual images as you want to practice them. In my case, I've just got like a giant fucking mood board. I'm gonna be zooming in and out on this thing, doing dipping my toes, <laughs> with legs, little bits and pieces of practicing from this, uh, practicing from this stuff. Because this is like a giant buffet, a giant leg buffet, basically, to kind of vibe with it. But uh, I'll talk a little bit about some, like. We're going to be getting a little bit more formal when we touch on the legs again next week, but um, for this session right now, I'll just be like, I'll dip, be dipping my toes in it and making observations with people here about the stuff. But like, I really need to kind of sit down with uh, study with do, with doing this for a little while before I can like tell people that, before I can like you know do. Um, Kind of what I did with like the torso anatomy thing where I'm doing like muscle memorization and stuff. Like that's gonna take a little bit longer to get into. Uh so yeah, um tonight won't be timed and we'll just be drawing along together. Uh but I'll show you some I'll show you little bits and pieces of stuff for how to think of the legs. Um Let's see if we can find a good one here that we have good, good, good generic pair of legs to use. Um, or actually, I'll do a freehand thing. But, like, the general idea of what we're going to. There's a few structures that we're going to be reusing a lot tonight. 
Uh, one of them is this kind of saucer dish sort of thing. And this is like the simple form of the pelvis. This is a simple 3D form. And it's a good idea to create an axis at the top and the bottom to show what direction it's facing and what direction it's tilting. Generally speaking, like if uh, if like the, if this is like the pelvis of somebody who's standing there, the pelvis is going to be tilted towards uh, uh, with the top of it facing towards us. So like this, and like the corners of the top of the pelvis, pelvic bone right here would be about like here and here where I've kind of darkened in a little bit. That's also something to keep in mind. And then like on either side of the pelvis, somewhere around here-ish, I'm not going to be exact with it, but uh, there's like a, I'm kind of like putting a line through the middle of it about right here. Like, uh, uh, about somewhere around here, a little bit down from the middle, like, there's, like, um, leg bones that come out of the sides here. Now, or the, like, the insertions for the leg bone, for the thigh bone joint, there. But generally, like, this, this pelvic dish is one of the big, one of the main forms we're going to be reusing a lot tonight. Another is a box version of the same idea, and you can uh, use you can alternate between both really. Uh, so the box version is imagine just imagine a box that's cleaner than this. The box version is a similar idea, except um, use a box form, and this is like the abdomen right here, like a center line on it, and you get like the tops of the pelvis on either side there. You can see some examples of that sort of thing in some of these, like here's one here. Um, if you notice like the tops of the pelvis right here, those little those little anatomical landmarks right there, that's where like this muscle that I haven't memorized the name of connects. That's very important for understanding how the leg works when we get further into the actual muscle anatomy in coming weeks. For now, like, for now, you're just gonna, I want you guys to just kind of dip your toes into this stuff. Uh, if you're kind of, like, I've done this anatomy stuff before, so this is not new to me. But if you're totally new to this, um, it's an opportunity to do, like, drawers or side-by-side -side drawings of trying to break down what you're seeing into simple forms. Like, right here, there's a great example of a box pelvis right here. A really kind of simplified box pelvis that doesn't even curve the sides of the abdomen. It kind of like angles them in like that. And then like these very simplified leg joints that are using like kind of... When we get more into the bones and stuff, we'll be touching more on this, but like you can see how the knee joint, for example, is uh, uh, the knee joint, for example, is this kind of complex structure of interlocking shapes, like this uh, this kind of cylinder shape that's resting on top of a uh, a block shape, and uh, we'll be getting more into how that stuff works in the coming weeks. But for now, you can like make little them. Some of these are anatomical, like. Some of these have anatomical explanations on them that you can read and check out. And again, this is like just dipping your toes in this stuff. Um, and if and like and if you want to like get more hardcore into studying it in the next week or so, which I'm going to be doing too. I'm going to be going over a lot of stuff like this. Proco has got Proco has just got like tons of like videos. I wonder if Ethan Ethan might yeah Ethan might have some stuff on Proco Proco legs in there that one video. But yeah, um, oh, another thing I want to encourage people to, um, even though, uh, we are doing the class in, um, Discord right now, uh, I want to encourage people to go to, uh, my Twitch, which I'm gonna link here. Uh, just, uh, You'll be just by sitting in the class, you'll be able to like support the viewer account or whatever of uh, the viewer engagement. It's 
stuff. Uh, like if you want to do it real time, if you want to do it real time in here, that's also cool. And uh, you can just turn the audio off in here. Um, in this Twitch stream, let me just see if my bit my bit rate is actually really good right now. So maybe I can. Let's see. Um, what am I doing? Let's put it on this. There we go. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, don't really have too much more to say other than, like, uh, we're going to be trying to use, uh, I'm going to tell you guys, like, uh, use a mix of gesture drawing, uh, where you're kind of, like, feeling out, like, the line, the general flow on the line of action of the leg and stuff, kind of like this, or, like, kind of a simplified exterior gesture drawing, like, let me, find, let me find a previous example I did, like this. This is kind of like... This is kind of like lay-in gesture drawing for an illustration right here. Or a, a figure, figure drawing study. Right here where you just like simplify it into simple forms. Um, this one's more of a structure study, but it does feature some gesture in it. Like this stuff is definitely gesture, and sometimes you'll start with gesture only. Also, this guy right here, this guy is not like an anatomy thing, but I included it here because I want to find more by this artist because this is a, it's not anatomically perfect, but it's a really interesting drawing and I like it. So I want to find out more from that artist. So please don't mind that. But yeah, there's a lot to pick from here. Some of these aren't the best. Like this one right here is not the best drawing, I would say. Kind of get it kind of gets a little screwy around with the leg area, but. I included it because it has a whole bunch of, like, written notes about the muscle groups, which will be handy in the future, in the near future, when we get more into memorizing the muscle groups and stuff. Uh, I'm going to be digging in the future more into, like, memorizing the individual color-coded muscle groups and so on with you guys. But for now, we're just mainly, mainly just kind of vibing with this stuff. You want to kind of get like an overall sense of like how the legs work and how the legs place. They can place feet. Um, these little box form of that pelvis, and then let's see here. It's kind of a 3D model skeleton, but so these joints are kind of really exaggerated, even though they are realistic. Yeah, there's a lot of bones in here that we're going to be touching on more in the future. Um, and these lovely simplified Proco forms showing how all the bones work here. If you can see, like, if, we, if you've done my hand anatomy uh, stuff in here before, you see that the, the foot down there has similar, similar metacarpals to the hand. And we'll be getting into those uh, later, too. Yeah. Oh yeah, like if you do want to get into the structure of the knee, like just use like a dowel like this on which like a um, the actual leg bone is attached. The thigh, the upper thigh. And then, like, under it, there'd be, like, this kind of cubic shape that it's resting on. Like so. These are roughly, these are roughly about equidistant in size, in a simplified abstract form. And then, like, roughly about the center, somewhere around the center area. Is a uh, is where the uh, kneecap is. The kneecap actually floats and changes position uh, depending on if the leg is bent or extended. We're not going to get too much into that. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick note about it. I, I'm really fuck it. I actually fucked that up really bad. Um, yeah, you can see right here. Like, there's a without the kneecap. There's a with the kneecap. Yeah, if you do want to get into that, you can do that. I'm, I'm, like, for, for me, like, if I'm doing like a 
quick simplified like study, I'll do something like uh, I just do like I just use like cylinders and cubes. Like here we go. Here's a thigh right here, and then here's like here's the top plane of a cube. And that's just like for the knee, the whole knee, right there. And there's another cylinder I made underneath here for the calf. Then I'm a fan of. I use these simplified forms of like box form for the heel of the foot. And it kind of places sort of hockey puck shape. There are a little ways out there. You get this very simplified, extremely simplified foot. Whoops, give me a second. I'm gonna make some audio adjustments. Here we go. Don't want the music to compete with me too much. Also, I am using some AI noise filtering, so I hope the traffic in the background doesn't really get picked up too much, but. I do kind of have to have the window open for a little while because it's really stuffy and sweaty in here. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's uh, that I'm going to be getting more into as I study along with you guys. Like, like look at how complicated this shit is. Um, you got like the, the you got like the hip bone here, then you got like this muscle that's like wrapping over here. Uh, that's connecting down further, like underneath the muscle, <laughs> underneath the muscle here, and doing all kinds of crazy shit. And then you got like the side plane of the buttocks here. It's like doing more crazy stuff of like inserting into that point there, wrapping over the back of the butt. This whole area here is really tricky uh, to to like wrap your head around unless you understand what the muscle groups are doing. And I'm horribly out of practice on that. So we're gonna, I'm gonna re-memorize stuff I used to have more ingrained and intuitive with all of you in the coming weeks. But for now, we're just kind of like dipping our toes in this stuff. It's like, it takes a while to digest this stuff. It's gonna take more than one day to really memorize like a piece of anatomy. I'm planning on, in addition to what we're doing here, re-practicing uh, the more recent stuff I did in torso anatomy. So I might sprinkle some of that in, in the coming weeks too. I, one thing I actually really am interested in possibly doing in the future is um, having a week where it's nothing but anatomy class, anatomy stuff, where we're just doing repetitive anatomy study drills to memorize, to memorize and to understand and to invent good stuff. Like that might be really helpful for all of us like a kind of anatomy crash course. I would say like, maybe about like, I would aim for like, maybe even like three whole weeks doing something like that. That would be fantastic. And if like the third, especially if like the second and third week we start getting into using the anatomy, using anatomy forms and perspectives a lot more. Yeah. Uh, here's a so here's something if you're familiar with Andrew Loomis or if you have access to some of the Andrew Loomis figure books, like there's a simplified skeleton form whose um, pelvis, whose pelvic uh, shape can help you wrap your head around how the uh, how the um, legs work, and you can freely invent with it. I want you to look at a lot of reference and like dig out more reference and stuff that you can find to practice from too. Um, if you're worried about whether or not what you're what you're what you found is good reference, like let me know. Um, post it. 
uh, post it in the Discord and you can tag me or something. Well, I think we should have, I think we should actually have a anatomy section if we don't are. I think I've made an anatomy section in our Discord, but then I might have gotten rid of it. So let's see if it's art, art, art. Yeah, it was down here. So let's see. Your channel. Anatomy. There we go. Let's label it anatomy. There we go. It's down here. Be down here. Be. Right under, right, under, right under art reference headers. So, if you have anatomy questions or if you have anatomy stuff to share, you can post it here. You can also post it in reference hunters right here. There's a lot of art reference that people can post in there, which is fantastic. I actually should start using because some of this stuff is really good. This is kind of a sequel to what we got going on in Ethan's Discord. I wish I could like copy paste the entire contents of where is it? reference hunters because people have been like keeping this surprisingly active uh not recently though like, uh, the last post was on december 14th but there's a lot of stuff going back in here if you want reference for things to to like draw from or practice just randomly but in any case we have a, a new location for that stuff here which is in uh right in here and you can re you can repost stuff there stuff here that you might have posted in reference hunters. Okay, so in the anatomy section here, boom, we can just start putting anatomy reference images, anatomy reference folders, talk, you can talk about anatomy stuff there. Mm. I might want to make an uh, anatomy discussion section. Anatomy discussion. And anatomy reference. And I might want to make a new category. Great, great, category. great category. Where'd the category go? It's all the way down there. Put it down here. Enemy discussion. Enemy reference. There we go. While we're at it, maybe, uh, well, there's animal drawings here. I don't know if animal drawings should be dragged down to anatomy. Maybe if I, I'll figure that out later. I want to maybe have a section for an animal anatomy or something, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, but now we have a basic section in my Discord for uh, anatomy discussion and anatomy reference posting. Where do we post the anatomy studies that we did? What's that? So where should we post the anatomy studies that we did? Oh, in there. That's fine. But uh, but for now, you can post them in uh, the drawing corner chat if you want me to look at them during the screen. Okay. You have so many Discord notifications. Yeah, I do. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> but these things? Well, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I, don't the servers. I only unmute the servers that I want to, like... Be notified by. Mm. Like my personal servers are usually unmuted. And I can always go into do not disturb in the mode if I don't. Yeah, like these invented the invented skeletons like this, you can use this for hips and like hip draw and stuff. It's like these kind of you got a couple of discs that are connected by like this fused piece right here, and then you can put the kind of the form of the spine on it, and then you can. It's like it's a suit ultra gestural simplified version of like how the um, the leg bones work. When you do the cylinder hips, um, instead of the discs, where do the like the legs come out of? What do you mean? 
like you know how when you look at like the really cheap mannequins and they have like the oh, hips that things. look like yeah don't mm -hmm. use those things those things are terrible okay <laughs> yeah those are, those are awful um there's another thing that I, that I actually have that I actually might want to photo. Let's see, um, there's a Spider-Man figure. Uh, Watts Atelier is known for using it, and I actually have one of them. There he is, he's right behind me. But he's got bigger, better joint articulation for his legs, if you can see on stream. On, uh, stream. And Watts Atelier actually has a uh, lesson assignment for that they teach when they're doing introductory figure drawing of using this guy using this guy in different poses to draw from. That's pretty cool. And you can uh, see the ball joint. Yeah. I actually may try to like photograph they actually spray they actually spray painted a version of him uh gray. And there's a bunch of photos of here's uh here's someone who's doing the doing the studies from the lessons here. Yeah. It actually doesn't look too far off from how um, Loomis draws it. It <laughs> draws those skeletons in his book. And yeah. Um, yeah, just like dig through this stuff. Um, I'll just keep going with this with this stuff. But we're gonna like we're gonna like build momentum on studying and practicing all the all this stuff. I think the way things are shaping out to just dig super hardcore into anatomy um, and uh, using and using anatomy functionally because I think that like coming at everything that we do from a much more solid understanding of like the bit All airplanes and helicopters you'll hear taking off and landing but I think walking through constructing legs uh, uh, well one of the reasons why I've been wanting to walk through uh, constructing legs for a little while is uh, it's it's how you're gonna be placing the figure in an environment an awful lot like uh, a figure that's standing in space and so on but in any case, like as far as anatomy in general goes, like um, I've kind of I think that like concentrating on something that's reliable that's not going to lie to you, like uh, understanding muscle groups and uh, understanding the forms that the figure break that the figure breaks down into. Um, I think doing that for a few weeks. And really, really doubling down and concentrating on that and making it intuitive would be really beneficial for myself and for the folks here. Like, it's gonna, it, it, it I like when you start getting way more into anatomy, like where it starts to become like intuitive and, and into memorization, it starts getting really satisfying. Like you start feeling like a renaissance man, a renaissance wizard genius studying and learning from um, learning from like uh, scientific anatomy and how to how to like pose things out and give it personality and, and things like that. Like wrap or, or like memorize different muscle groups and walk through them over and over again so you have so you have like understandings of how to handle it from different angles and stuff. Like I've really kind of developed a taste for that, and I want to kind of run with it more. So the goal tonight is to just kind of vibe with what you're doing, like uh, just try stuff. Try a gesture study. Try a um, try an invented leg study. Try like can try doing a full figure, um, like full figure with the legs. Um, 
just try to pick bits and pieces of knowledge apart from the stuff you're seeing. You can, I'm dancing around from thing to thing because I'm just kind of getting a taste of all of it. But like, as I start getting like more into like more into this, I'm going to start slowing down. And um, in the coming, in like the coming days, like tomorrow and stuff, I'm going to be going much slower over more formal, constructive tutorials myself to kind of, like, commit more stuff to memory. But for now, I'm just trying to get, like, an overall sense of it. Like, let's see here. Kind of like taking this approach is a good way to sort of loosen you up. Get kind of an overview of the subject so you don't get really stiff when you're doing it. And also so you you um you don't have like you get a kind of a, a little taste of a lot of you get a little taste of a lot of subject. And then you can slow down and start doing more formal studies. We will do. Again, this is warm up week, so this, that's part of what's going on here. We're all, myself and you guys are also getting more warmed up into this stuff. Here, one second. Uh, some of these handouts that are in here, like this is from an Imagine FX anatomy tutorial right here. This one actually shows off some of the principles that we're going to be going over in more detail in the future in here. Like this is a really, really simple, uh, this is, they're talking about like starting with simplified shapes. This is like not too far off from, this is like a step or two beyond the gesture drawing step where they've kind of added more dimensionality and shape to it. And then here they've added like much more, they've carved more, more much, to, uh, carved and added more dimensionality to it. This is still, this is like some more anatomy structure forms in it, but still really simplified. Uh, and more like more rooted in shape, and then this is like more about this is more about layering in the anatomy. That's kind of what how we're gonna pro be approaching stuff in the future here. And also, thank you, Cuddle Giver, for the prime sub. Every little bit of donation and uh, sub is appreciated for these class. Oh, this is uh, if you notice, this is a I believe this is a George Bridgman study. I think this is a Procos. I think this is a Procos study of George Bridgman. Let's see here. Yeah, it is. Here's the drawing that it's a study of. Right there. That's a George Bridgman uh, drawing. And then this is a. I believe this is a study of that. Like interpreting that. There's more George Bridgman down here. We're going to be getting more into Bridgman in the future. Like Bridgman is a um, Bridgman is a tricky one. Oh man, it's already roasting hot in this room from closing this stuff. I think I'm going to have to open the window again. Another plane cars and stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff you can do, like, as you're starting to get kind of a sense of, like, how the legs work. Like, you can use these drawings, if you're drawing alongside. You do, like, quick, quick gestural studies of, like, the overall posture of the figure. Or you can just, you can isolate the legs, too, to do them. But, um, if you're doing, like, these kind of, like, side-by-side -side studies, you just use, like, quick, quick shapes, kind of use, kind of using the same angles and stuff on the overall feeling of the pose. Because you kind of want to like pick up a bit of like 
how these how these uh, drawings that these artists have made that we're using as study material, how the po how the posture of them sort of works, or how they place legs on the ground and, and stuff like. And then you can do drawers like this that are showing it. Like there's a there's like um stuff to pay attention to on that um the overall like kind of posture of the legs is like which foot is carrying the weight of the leg. In this case, it's this, it's this thought, it's this leg that's carrying the weight. This, this hip is tilted down. So this knee is bent a little bit bent towards the knee is bent a little bit towards us. So the leg is very slightly foreshortened compared to over here. And use the pelvic dish side up here. Break that down a bit. And we're seeing more of the side of the body here versus over here because of how the hip is angled. And as a result, we see the more of the buttocks over there. More of the side of the buttocks. Yeah, we're just we're just trying to get an overview of this stuff. So I'm curious, uh, how are people liking the study materials, and how are you, how are you? Uh, is there anything you're struggling with as you're trying to like get value out of studying? As well, as far as anatomy goes, um, that's when I had to to leave the school I was going to was when we were about to get into that. So all I've ever really learned was uh, gesture drawing, mm -hmm. and I kind of had to pick everything else up on my own for like the last yeah like ten years uh, I've been working at it. So like I'm watching you like do these overdraw studies, but I don't really have any understanding of what it means. Well, in the case of what I'm doing right now, like, this is just a shape study. I'm making cylinders out of the thighs right here. And I'm connecting them up with the this cube form that I'm using for the pelvis right here. So it's just shapes. Um, we're going to be getting more into, like, the actual, like, muscle groups and the actual bones and so on. But for now, like, you can physically see it. Like, look, look right here. There's, like, that's sort of, like, a, a ground plane form that this artist made. That you can draw over and keep in mind like look at how they use that kind of ground plane thing in 3d space to place the feet mm. like that's a tool you can vibe you can pick up on and vibe with and like they did that ground plane form and then you can kind of like infer the ground plane stuff that they use to get like the direction of the knees and the tilt and um that that, is, that also plays off like three dimensionality the hips and so on and so forth you can see like uh like there's here's the bottom here's like the bottom of the foot on the ground but then you have like this front plane right here with like a 3d kind of box that's of the toes that are coming off the preview box that's containing the toes yeah coming off the ground and so on and get the side of the foot there that's this very simplified 3d shape you can see that shape is something that Proko and a few other examples here utilize on some of the other examples let me see if I can find one right here I don't think I put too many of his of Kroko's feet in here. But there was oh, here we go. It's this thing right here. You can see like this very simplified form of like how the how the foot works. Um, aside from Proko, uh, I would say that Michael Hampton's book would be a great resource to go for. Okay. There's a few Michael Hampton things in here. Yeah, I gotta do, I, there's a lot less Michael Hampton in here than I, than I meant to put in. But yeah, there, here, here's, yeah I, here's some Michael Hampton right here. Okay. Yeah, I gotta do way more shape study then. It's like, I guess it's kind of like uh, the, the step I've been missing. I mean, one thing that you can keep in mind is, oh, you know how gesture is. I mean, just you start integrating gesture. And well, first off, you need 
you need to combine gesture with shapes. And the way you combine gesture with shapes is um, usually you curve the shape. Like instead of just making like a stiff, um, a stiff cylinder. Yeah. You might curve the cylinder a bit, for example. Like because these are organic forms that you're drawing. You're not, uh, and the, the, the cylinder and the boxes and stuff that you're using on a human figure. Um, like you can, you have leeway to kind of bend them a bit, uh, to kind of bend them and, and, and so on and play with them because they're like fleshy bony forms that are really complicated and stuff. Okay. And, and it makes it come more, it makes those organic forms come more alive. Uh, when you kind of do that, the, the times when you wouldn't do that is if you're like drawing machinery. Mm. But even then, like you can see, like it's a lot of times when machine, even machinery gets like, exaggerated in almost uh, in almost like organic-looking ways. But I mean, like the same principle applies when you're like drawing trees, or you're drawing even like waterfalls or something, or animals or rocks and stuff. Like you, when you're drawing complex forms that aren't like geometrically like perfect, um, like organic forms from the real world. Um, they can be kind of they can be kind of like uh, they can have like a ener the energy of gesture applied to them but you want to combine gesture and shape okay or you want to learn how to create a balance between the two the um the way Steve Houston uh, says about going, how, the best way to go about going, about doing it is like, here, look, I'm making a gesture, making a gesture line right here. Made another gesture line right here. You got two parallel gesture lines right there. Um, now, if I want to make those gesture lines into a shape, I just have to add ends to it. In this case, I'm adding. Two cylindrical ends to it and now I've created basically a cylinder I can add more cylinder pieces on it here like that okay and you can do that with like cube forms and stuff too like here let's uh, add a couple more gesture lines like this and then uh, adding a cube form down here so I got this shape that's kind of like turning from a sort of a cylinder up here, slowly kind of morphing into a cube down here. And that's uh that's like a simplified structure of a forearm. Okay. Maybe like if I wanted to add a hand here, I could like add a little kind of Curvy bendy cube for the uh, for the palm right there. And then I add some gesture lines for the for the like the fingers or however I'm gonna do them or whatever. I'm not gonna dwell too much on that because I need to. Uh, we're gonna be getting. Don't worry, folks. We're gonna be getting back into hands more. I've been slacking off on my daily hand diary. By the way, I've got two makeup days to make. But, should I start adding shapes in, into those hand studies, or should I stick yeah, with sure. just kind of no, being gesture? You, you should everything. dance around. Uh, you should dance around between them. Like okay. if, if there if there's something you feel you need to concentrate to get right and get better at, concentrate on that, and then do it for a bit, and then dance to the then then dance to the next thing. Um, you want to kind of you want to want to kind of develop a sense of when to move from one thing to the next and there's times when you want to like double down and concentrate like uh right now i'm just kind of getting a taste of everything at the moment like i'm kind of dipping a little bit into shape dipping a little bit into draw over studies invention copy studies this is like a sketchbook kind of warm-up-y sort of overview approach to dipping into this really complex subject I get you. Cause like I, I've been I've been trying for about the last four or five months to like figure out like where I'm at. Um and so like this uh this and the like the Lewis head one we did the other day have been like like really helpful for that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, as I get more warmed up, I'm going to be showing people how to do more formalized studies, too. Uh, that we've done a little bit of that. But... Some of it is like it's, re literally, it's literally repetition. You'll do one study, and then you'll do another study, and then you do another study. You just kind of get it ingrained. Let's see what's something I can pull from here. You can see like you yeah, oh as you start doing more of these, like you start developing a sense of like angles, for example. Like how those hips are angled. And what parts, what cues you can see in a drawing or in a photograph, because we're gonna be doing using some photographs more in the future for our anatomy stuff too. Um you can find stuff in it like like here like for like that for that really comp like that this um region of the buttocks where like a bunch of muscle a bunch of muscles around the buttocks of the thigh all insert like that i'm kind of making a little landmark of basically right there with a little kind of ellipse that's like this kind of stuff you can use like you can use the knee as the bend of the knee as like um a cue for making like a cube. We've got a 3D shape here showing the direction, the change of direction in 3D space. Right there. Use the cube for the whole thing. This little kind of. You can just kind of play with it and kind of build into these shapes and stuff. It's to de it's develop it's to like develop your observation skills and kind of. Um, get you familiar with this stuff without uh, necessarily overwhelming you because you can kind of take doing studies like this at your own pace. Like doing this should be like kind of fun. Like it's your chance to kind of play around and like pull bits and pieces of things to kind of uh, learn. And what's cool is by like getting exposed to all this stuff, like if you want, if you like, uh, well, first off, like, let's say you have a drawing that you're doing where you have to solve a problem with legs. Well, you got a giant thing where you did, you got a giant thing where you did a bunch of draw over studies that you can, uh, that you can pull from or draw over side by side studies. And you've got, you've also got a kind of a, because you did studies of this stuff, you've got kind of a mental library you can pull from to solve those problems on, when you, if you need to solve them on the spot from having done that's done stuff like this yeah the, the waist down is definitely like my my weaker area when it comes to when it comes to that so this is it this is, is really... it is for a lot of people actually because like people people tend to like draw like faces and upper torsos and stuff it's it's tricky to place the feet and the legs and also like the hips are deceptively complicated Look, I, I could I could do it if it was just like the gesture, but like to actually like go and turn it into a, a character and add shoes or to actually add like yeah like volume to it, like I just it's 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 just a mess. Yeah, well I mean like that's why you do studies like this, because you learn how to like break stuff down into three D forms. Also like learning these complex forms of anatomy is how you learn to make design decisions when simplifying. Mm. Like you, uh, you learn a bunch of complex forms so that you can imply imply them, or like for, or know when to edit them. Um, when you're designing like a character or something, or doing like right. stylized a stylized realistic a stylized realistic figure that eliminates uh, detail. Uh, figure quick sketch is actually really good for that, by the way. Uh, a figure what sketch? Quick sketch, because you have to make quick decisions. Mm. So like, in the future we're probably going to be doing, it would actually, now that I think about it, it would be a good idea, like, after, in, in like, say we're doing a week of figure quick sketch, uh, figure anatomy study stuff, maybe like a quick sketch day, focused on the area of anatomy that we're kind of covering, would be good.
Friday is usually going to be like an action and quick sketch kind of e action and quick sketch sort of oriented day. So we'll be doing that. And uh, I we it might be a good idea to like do a lake focused day for that. Like we can we can do like the full figure too then, but like with an emphasis with an extra emphasis on lake like stuff. Let's see what I can what I can do with it though. Sloppy study there, but oh well. So there are bits and pieces of like George Bridgman stuff I've included. I think this is, well, that's not Bridgman. But it kind of, it looks like it's a study of Bridgman. Um, this is Bridgman though. Yeah. How would you, how would you go about um, optimally using like a, like a, like a, like a, like a like like some of the drawing books that that, that buddy put up on Optimally. media fire there like i downloaded all of those like like would you use it like uh would it just be like a mix of draw over draw from and like reading or is there like a yeah i mean you use it yeah. use, use it in little bits and chunks um bits and chunks and you should definitely read the text usually in most of those drawing books uh they write the text for a reason and there's stuff you won't wrap your head around if you if you don't read the text. Like they might be telling you how not to draw something, mm. and um, and if you just copy it sla copy slavishly what they're showing you, then you're gonna probably pick on some bad information that was meant to be a way to for you to avoid that problem. Uh, and there's also other stuff like other insights and other details you won't know that you won't understand you won't wrap your head around as easily unless you read the text like they often i've often seen a lot of stuff especially in anatomy books where they like uh they in order to help you wrap your head around like how a thing works they describe mm -hmm. it in kind of a metaphorical way um, like uh i don't know the trapezius looks is kind of like a pair of wings or something i don't know no this is this, this, this is good information I'm gonna get a quick um, water. We're gonna keep going for about another hour and ten minutes, I would say. So I want to keep these classes to about two hours, at least for now. Uh, we'll probably do uh, longer ones in the future, provided people enough people have stomach for them, and also like as I said, give them more energy to do them. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get some water. Now a word from our sponsor.
Alexa, set a downstairs timer for six minutes. Six minutes, starting now on downstairs. All right. I'm back with a snack. Are you sharing? Hmm. What's that? I said, are you sharing? No. <laughs> so the artist, remember, you gotta eat what you eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a lot of this is coming back to me now from school. Yeah. Anyway, now that I've gotten a lot of that out of my system, maybe slow down a bit and take a look at some of these study materials that we're looking at. Like this Imagine Effects uh, Anatomy Guide. You can actually get a, still get a hold of this, by the way. What the, why is it not letting me do this? It can't. So let me spacebar. It's really or undo. What's going on with us? It's because you didn't share your snacks. <laughs> am I, am I gonna have to restart the file? It's really annoying. Did you save it at least? Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, it thinks I'm in a different. It thinks I'm in a different program now. Something. Like it's not, Under, oh, the keyboard's not working. That's fine. There. Well, right, this is this starting to make sense. There we go. Okay. I just have to turn the keyboard on and off. I don't think it is low on batteries. It's just the battery's got jostled or something. <laughs> yeah, the Imagine FX uh, anatomy guide is pretty helpful. Uh, I'll be using, using it some more myself. I think what helped me the most is that is that Proco foot and the way you broke that foot down to those three shapes because I because that's like that's what I've been banging my head against the wall with forever. I was just using triangles and I was just using cubes and yeah. I mean, like uh, the easy the easiest way to think of it is just like foot is uh, you start with a cube for the heel. I can't believe I ever even considered an idea of like an organic shape. Like I kept trying to use such literal shapes well you can use a mix of both really like a, you can use like a you can use more literal shapes for certain things and like like harder stuff like joints and like knees and stuff can be more literal shapes versus like more organic stuff like muscle areas or like really kind of weird weirdly bendy bones yeah yeah exactly but that's it's such a it's such a such a trip You can see me on my screen right now. I'm, uh, doing a simple, simple abstract foot. Mm. Now the angle of the ankle is actually not quite right, quite like that. Like, um, let me see if I can find a good thing, a good thing that shows up. Well, I guess this one would show up, but I mean, like, um. So the angle of like the side of this muscle to this muscle kind of goes like that, and then opposed to it is the angle of the ankle, generally speaking. So like, 
can keep. Oh damn! Mm -hmm. I so the the ankle. Okay. But no, that's like the corners of the calf muscle. Like we can you can see it here, for example. It like goes from like that to that, and then like that to that. And this is like oh. the. Um, I mean, there's the big toe right there. So this is like the outside. Yeah, we'll get more into like the specifics of the anatomy after I digest some stuff, like re-memorizing this stuff so I can do it like freehand from invention. And here's George Bridgman right here. Uh, George Bridgman is, like I said, he's he's kind of dark souls of studying anatomy in terms of what you have to go into and go into knowing uh, before you start learning from him. Mm. But. Um, He's still worth dipping your toes in if you are kind of trying, are kind of taking what he's doing and trying to simplify what he's what he's showing you. Uh, Jeff Watts actually released a book recently uh, about studying Bridgman, and uh, there's been several courses that go over how to study Bridgman. by various artists, including Jeff Watts. Yeah, the goal... Oh, man, the goal that, that alternating thing. Sorry, I'm still, so, still blown away by that, because now I'm going through and I'm seeing that in, like, every single piece of reference. Yeah. As, and so, like this, this is not probably not the best organized study sheet that I've ever done. But this is like, it's like a fuck it. We're just, I've just got tons of stuff to pick from. Uh, there's going to be like a ton of variety for me to go, to dip into. Um, you guys can break up the stuff that I gave you however you like, like cut out segments of it that if that you might need. Oh, here we go. So roughly about right here or so would be. Hmm, maybe not. Hang on, I think I suspect the music might be competing with my voice on the screen. Oh, I can't hear any music. Let me lower it there. Do you guys use the this, uh, noise function on Discord? Because like that thing works like a dream. Yeah, well, the, the music's playing on my stream, not on my di not not through Discord. Oof. Actually, getting a little bit tired already. So I was practicing before uh, I came into this this stuff, but yeah, I found like a lot of good stuff. There's like a bu there's like a bunch of stuff by like some manga artists. Uh, some of these are things that I recognize that where i'm going to probably be using a more formal guide like this one i've seen a lot of guides like this that show like the range of motion of a leg and if you and this is really helpful for like showing in a simplified way like how that how that you see that red muscle right there how, well first of all how the, the thigh changes shape and how the muscles change shape as the th as like the leg bends and stuff but like uh this muscle in particular Right here, how it wraps over from. Oh, that's when crazy. It's, when it's extended and when it's not. Like there's lot, there's lots of little little things like that that are gonna come in handy when we dig more into this stuff. Uh, here's some of Bridge. Here's some more Bridgman. Uh, Br Bridgman's uh good, great for a lot of things, but one of the things he, in particular that he's good for is like helping you think of the um, organic forms as kind of like 3D chunks. Sort of like that. He, he's good for that and also for like... There's the 3D chunks, chick, like almost like chunks of fried chicken that interlock together a little bit. And kind of reminds me... Oh, sorry, Ben. And uh, he's also good for... Um, I don't. There's not any particularly great examples on here. But he's great for like showing like how to think of the body in terms of being like a, a machine, made of mechanical, 
made of, made of like working mechanical parts. It, it kind of reminds me of how uh, Mike Mignola does. Uh... Oh yeah, he studied Bridgman. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, um, there's a lot of people that did, like Frank Frazetta, who studied Brid studied Bridgman extensively. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah. In fact, like Fra cool. Frank's work like really radically changed when he when he did study Bridgman, and he like literally like for Bridgman like his friend his comic artist peers were like uh, dude you gotta check out this you gotta check out Bridgman uh, Bridgman stuff and they gave him a bunch of like Bridgman study materials <laughs> and um, he in, in a like a day he like a day or like in a weekend I think uh, the story goes he, he like he came back to them okay I've copied I've done copy studies of virtually everything in here and, uh, and they, were, they were like, holy shit. And they, um, he was already good before, but there was like a drastic lift in his, um, in the quality of his work after that, because he like really dug it into, dug into Bridgman. He got a lot, huge amount out of it. But people, it's like, crazy, there's books that teach you how to study it. Yeah. I and mean, he figured it out on his own. But, mm. let's see, Bridgman Frazetta, because there's like a bunch of like old sketches. You can find like on auction sites and stuff that show off him doing him studying. Let's see. Well, there's some studies by other people. Oh, here's one. Uh, no, that's no, this is an original Bridgman drawing. But there's like uh, if, if you pop, if you go around, you can find um. Frank Frazetta's uh, Bridgman drawings. Rosetta learns anatomy. Here we go. Hmm. Yeah, it's nothing here. But I did find a bunch of stuff of uh, previously of Frazetta. Uh, Frazetta's studies of Bridgman. Okay. Oh, hey. Some of his photo references in here. Let's see. Uh, whoops. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing there. But um, but yeah. Actually, I think I might be able to find it with Frank Rosetta sketches. There might be some um old studies of his somewhere in here that show that off. Oh, here's some. Well, this is like stuff from the same like. Oh wow. Uh, this this is not Bridgman, I don't think, but there but there's stuff on like there's stuff like from this era, that is in here that is the Bridgman studies that he did. Let's see if we can find there's 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 some these are some Bridgman skulls. Um, let's see. Don't think that any of that's Bridgman. But there is stuff in there is stuff that in, in like these kind of things that are kind of recognizably Bridgman. Yeah, these are Bridgman. These are Bridgman studies, right there. All right on. Yeah, that was back when he like first started doing them. <laughs> I think some of those are. Um, That's so cool. Anyway. So yeah, like, uh, Bridgman is tricky. Like, you don't want to, like, get caught up in, like, the hatchy details of it. You kind of want to, uh, you kind of want to, like, understand what he's trying to tell you. And, right. uh, and like, some of the text, so, uh, some of the text of those Bridgman books was kind of garbage. But some of it is pretty helpful because it's not actually written by him it's actually written by his students or in some oh. cases by um by like the authors of who put the compilation of bridgman 
book Brisbane work together. Okay. Um, so it's in varying quality, but it can be, but it can be helpful to read it. But the way to study Bridgman is, um, is to go into it kind of knowing a good amount of anatomy to begin with and, uh, to try to sim try to simplify it and in interpret it instead of copy it. I mean, you should be doing that in general, but it's, you really can't like verbatim copy Bridgman per se like it's kind of kind of a fool's errand to do that with, like without mm -hmm. like understanding like you want to reconstruct it but you want to reconstruct it and turn it over in your head like make it a make it your own kind of 3d form interpretation like let's see if i can jeff watts is really fucking rad at, at doing uh jeff watts bridge now but he's got several videos on uh, Bridgman. On uh, some of them, for, uh, some well, he got taught stuff on tutorials. But uh, yeah, those are some studies by him, I believe. And this is some more Bridgman studies by him. There's his book. Those are some Bridgman studies right there. Those are by Eric Guest, who's uh, also one of the people who teaches at the school. Um. Yeah. I guess I guess it's just all about like sifting through. You, you find what works uh, for you with what you're doing, right? Well, yeah. I would say that Bridgman is like really kind of like a big keystone for a lot of people. So uh, as we start to get more into stuff like. Bridgman is like one of those things like when you're ready for it, it kind of like is opening your third like when you really dig into him, he really will open your third eye, basically. Oh, that's <laughs> crazy. Oh, I like that. Yeah, there's a lot of images here of his stuff, Bridgman stuff. Yeah, molding, 3D kind of molding, so thinking of the forms that way. Um, there's uh, mechanical diagrams of, um, of the anatomy. There's also a really good sense of like weight to it, like, mm -hmm. which is really important. I mean, is it is it about is it? So because I am emphasizing the legs tonight, like I'm doing some figure studies to connect uh, what I'm what I'm trying to learn, the studies of the legs and the rest of the form. But one of my goals for tomorrow will be to try to do like reconstructive like structure studies and anatomy drills like walking through the bone the bones of uh of the legs and the pelvis but for tonight for just like getting it like th this stuff was like uh i gotta kind of like i gotta kind of vibe with it for this evening because like the tomorrow like a lot of this stuff is gonna cut like it's gonna like sort of like spark up in my head a little bit easier 
<laughs> like having spent some time to kind of play with it, um, I can approach it. Um, I can approach it a lot more intelligently for tomorrow's studies. Yeah, I want to I want to see about doing some like formal anatomy studies tomorrow, but then I want to kind of like maybe sort of see how I can play that into the action studies we're going to be doing on Friday. So these are 3D models right here that I'm doing a study on, but these are like really kind of dynamically posed. Very well, we're very well executed 3D models, I would say. Mm. I'm going to kind of use them to sort of play off. There's a little little bits of observation I can make in them. Like um, this calf right here is foreshortened towards us. It's like coming towards the camera, so it's going to be smaller than like this calf, which is like a little bit straighter on. But, uh, this upper thigh is tilted slightly towards us. From the bottom side and this calf is but we can see some of the cap end of that cylinder but it's turned away more away from us than this one i think because this this thigh is kind of longer than this one mm -hmm. Even though this whole leg is actually closer to the a little bit closer to the camera than that other one, I think. There's the center line of the, uh, the hips right there. So I'm gonna try to freehand some hips and some legs real quick. Now that I'm starting to get kind of warmed up into it. So let's see. Do kind of a dish. I'll do one of the dish forms here. A kind of picture in my mind's are some of the legs that I was drawing. Or actually, I can have it over here. I can have like the reference image over here, and maybe like have it nearby to kind of cheat sheet over to. It's like I'm not too worried about making like perfect, perfectly proportioned legs, but I just kind of want to vibe with inventing something right now, using some gesture and a little bit of structure. Hmm. Gonna do a full figure kind of keep it in roughly in the ballpark of proportions and try to like maybe say like the center of gravity is somewhere up here ish so the head would maybe lean a little bit that way
proportions on the thighs a little bit off. Just that a bit. Let's move on to another invented figure. Like, it isn't enough to just do the studies and stuff. You have to kind of, like, want to utilize them for invention. Curious what people uh, if people have anything to anything to post in uh, chat. Maybe take a look at some of them. That first study I did was kind of piecemeal. This one's a little bit more flowing because I'm kind of taking the whole figure into account a little bit more. But these are just kind of like... Still almost kind of like warm-up studies. Yeah, I'll post something in a minute, I guess. Posing mannequins are only good as decoration. That's definitely true. Um, let's see here. But yeah, feel free to post anything in the in the Discord if you got something worth posting. And like, if you got something, even if you like, want to share something that you might be struggling with, for example. I'm sort of using like uh, some of the luminous uh, leg forms here for like a basic little kind of gesture, gesture drawing of the legs and the thighs for inventing like, inventing a quick little gesture, invent, uh, inventing a little gesture study with a seated pose.
do special sketch here. It's not very proportionate. Like the legs are a little shrinky dinky down there, and like uh, stuff is going in weird directions. But this is the kind of stuff you do when you're just sort of sort of vibing with mm -hmm. material that you're trying to learn. And it's the kind of thing that, like, if I do a sketch like this, I get more warmed up later, and, like, my sense of proportions are more in tune. Like, that's the kind of thing I can go back, if I, like, say, if I have, like, a physical sketchbook especially, I can go back and, like, fix those errors. Like, rub it down with a eraser, or, like, take another color pen and draw, draw the corrections over it. Because I, I know that there's, I can, I know that there's stuff that's way off in these little conventions that I'm doing because I need to warm up and I need to, I, to me I need to warm up throughout this next week on doing this and just figures in general really it's gonna take a it's gonna take some uphill fighting to get my eye and my hand back in tune I was just um just post it in the drawing chat out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll check it out in a sec. Uh, yeah, see, uh, were these, uh, copy studies? Or driver studies? What? What? Repeat, please, once again. Uh, the person who, uh, him, the, um... Yeah, yeah, it's been... I think that one was a cop was a copy study, but this one... Were they, are, are yeah, they, yeah, are they, exactly. Are... So this one's a drawover study? Or isn't that one's a copy study? Yeah. Yeah. That's... Like ideally, we want to get to the point where like where our 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 copy studies start looking more like our draw over studies, uh, and that's that's what I'm going to be working on. Uh, and it, and like eventually, then our invented figures will start looking more like a, a more like a um, a dynamic uh, uh, a dynamic copy study or something, but we made it ourselves. I mean, that's the goal, isn't it? To be able to create our own poses and uh, our own figures and drawings. So, like, the point is to break it even in the more simple forms. Uh, yeah, than well, I, I mean, if it's simple, if it's simple, then uh, then you have, then it's easier to track. And uh, it's either easier to track and manipulate. And you can just layer additional information, like in anatomy and other things, later. But I mean, like it's kind of it's kind of tough, especially like for me coming back into this rusty to like clear the noise out of your brain, to um, to like simplify stuff and take things step by step. So it's going to take me some false starts over the next week couple weeks or so actually as I start getting back in drawing shape to uh, get back up to speed I mean I'll know when I'm I'll know when I'm in speed when I'm back up to speed like I'll be I can like I know when I feel like I'm in the zone but 
we can't be in the zone all the time. And uh, there's plenty you can do to get good drawings, even when you're not feeling it. In fact, when you're not really feeling it, that's usually a good time to try to struggle and get better. Like, you don't want to burn yourself out by overdoing it. So you do need rests to break, rest breaks to, like, process things and stuff. Like, pace yourself. But you don't want to be lazy. Mm. A really wild perspective figure here. Yeah, uh, once we start getting into, like, the memorization stuff and, like, learning how to, like, think of those pieces of memorization as 3D shapes, and, uh, it, like, part of the memorization is going to be memorizing the 3D shapes and uh, learning, how, le learning how to use them. Uh, once we get that to that point, we'll be able to, you know, do stuff kind of like what this guy did that I just did a draw on of a perspective figure study. Uh, where he changed the positions of the arms and stuff, and did studies in the range of the motion of the arms. I also kind of noticed that uh, even simply working with the simple shapes in any 3D program helps you to understand the form oh, yeah. much better. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's also why like, cross-training and sculpting uh, for artists helps a lot. Like, if we, um, I'm looking at possibly getting into, like, 3D modeling, uh, so I can do anatomy studies in 3D models, like in Blender or something. Oof. I'm getting actually really tired. Uh, I may actually end the class about a half hour early because I'm getting really fatigued right now. Oof. But I'll take a look yeah, at people's cause studies. Because there, I mean, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Yeah, while you while you're sculpting, you, I'd say, have to go through the whole pipeline of uh, building it. And uh, I mean, since the building of the scene with the simple forms and then uh, deadlizing to the final result. Yeah. Let's see if I can fix the proportions on this guy before I. Call it a night, though. Uh, hi, can you hear me? I'm just yes. checking. Okay, uh, I'm late for a class, uh, so before it ends, I'm just checking if there was a reference uh, reference sheet that you shared. Yes, there is. There's a big. Uh, uh, there's a big. Trying to find it in the yeah, there's a big Google Drive thing that I linked in chat that uh, that you can uh, download the pure rough file and a bunch of other other bunch of other useful things. Oh, I just found it. Thank you. Portion is still pretty off, but this is looking a little better now. But this is the kind of stuff I want to do, like, uh, when we do, like, sketching anatomy studies, we do another layer on them, making fixes, adding more detail to them. Um, that's, of course, the same process you go through when you're, like, you know, doing a real drawing. 
or you're taking a sketch and turning it into the drawing or something. Yeah, I'm starting to get really fatigued right now, so I'm going to maybe call it a night pretty soon. But I'll take a look in, in chat. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of stuff. Um, this is kind of a, like the, you want to be more careful about how you construct your cubes. You want don't want to be sloppy with the cube. Like that, that's fine. That cylinder's looking fine. Like the, the, the cube's looking fine. This look a little bit weird. Like this should be straight out right here. Okay. Uh, you want you want to like think about things three dimensionally. Like you're not uh, when you're doing the three dimensional shapes stuff. You don't want to. When I say when I say use the curved forms and stuff, you want to. You can use the curved organic forms, but you, uh, for uh, for stuff, but you don't want to lie about the things that make contact with um, like flat surfaces, for example. Like the foot here should the foot here should be planted. If you notice, like on the uh, on the reference here of that one guy with who's planting his feet, for example, like the um, uh, certain like certain joint certain joints are going to get, be very very kind of like mechanical, like uh, uh, as your point of reference a lot of times. Like, let's see if we can find a good example. It, it, mind you, it only applies when you're uh, to when you're doing those shapes. Like, take a look at like George Br George Brisbane, for example. Like, he does really complex 3D shapes that are kind of like pliable and bendy mm -hmm. and stuff, but they make sense. And uh, this is someone who, if you asked him to draw a cube, a like a, a plausible cube, he'd be able to do that too. Um. Let me see if I can find a good example in here. What I'm talking about. Where's the guy? Who, where's the guy who made the ground plane? Oh, that was. Uh... Oh, it's here. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, he was still working with really complex forms and stuff, but like you can, his initial guide for the uh, for the legs, like, uh, was very kind of based on mechanical perspective. Okay. But freehand mechanical perspective, mind you, but um, but like it was still like based in like very kind of mechan, like almost like the the the. Like the notice, like the foot becomes starts to become like more mechanical than the more organic parts. So that gives that get that anchors it that anchors the figure a little bit more in space, and then you can kind of correlate that to other parts. And like bony masses are good parts to uh, good parts of the body. Like bony masses and bony joints are good parts to strategically make a little bit more mechanical ish. Like you can kind okay. of. These are really complex right here, but oh, the knee, way he handled the knees. But even those, you can kind of see a clear plane direction for the bend of the mm -hmm. knee and stuff, like a box form almost a little bit. So, but you want to keep how you want to keep how like box forms and three D forms work in mind, so you don't so you don't get sloppy with them. Gotcha. They, they have to connect up as if you're like in a let's see. It's, like in a like in a 3D program like SketchUp or something like that. Like when you when you lay down something that's parallel to another thing on the same perspective line, it's going to line up on the perspective line and stuff. Like when you build mm -hmm. things, you want to think in those terms when you're making your little 3D shapes and stuff. Okay. You're construct you're constructing stuff in in 3D space, and you have a point of reference using like one thing to relate to another thing. Like if you're doing like freehand 3d construction yeah you see that you see me do that a lot with when i'm doing the feet like uh the like i ha i usually establish the cube early on to place the feel of the foot first off but also to kind of inform me like what direct what like what's the direction that the ankle is in and stuff like i know that this is the side plane and uh that's the top plane and so on. So I can kind of infer where the ankle's going to be, and then I often will, like, do kind of a guide out here to 
kind of place where I'm going to place the, the front of the foot that gets extruded upwards. This is just like a quick sketch, quick dirty sketch version of this sort of thing. And then, okay. then I'm just going to then I'm just going to use like kind of like a couple C curves here to sort of do the ankle. And I can make like a 3D dowel that goes through the there for the uh, there for the ankle. Like a That. But that's just an example, and you, you, you'd um, not want to be sloppy about it. Like there, uh, I would, I would even like maybe try using like a ruler tool sometimes to sort of help you visualize a bit. Okay. But um, but then like with this. With that information from that, I can kind of like sort of guesstimate about like roughly the angle of the kneecap, for example. It's going to be going like kind of like this because there's pro there's an there's like a imaginary vanishing point somewhere right over this way, and it's mm -hmm. uh, going down here, but then coming up. Here, let's maybe like the eye lo the horizon line would be maybe about here ish, I want to say, for this for example. So, you want to like when you're doing those shapes and stuff, you want to have like a little bit of perspective in the back of your head sometimes. You don't always use perspective in these, but having like a little drops of it here and there will help you. Okay. Uh, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times, like either the camera's going to be so pulled back, or the the particular study you're doing doesn't really have perspective. Uh, doesn't really have like linear perspective. Instead, it's going to have like an isometric perspective, where the stuff isn't going to a vanishing point per se, or the vanishing points are too wide apart to really justify like doing stuff at different angles. In this case, I think that so we got a cube form here. I think that the there is a van there is a real vanishing point on this on the way that this person drew this leg because that foot is planted on the ground and angled this way with the heel touching down back here versus like uh, about what I think with the knee is angled there and then like the hips are normally tilted towards you because like the way that like, here here's a body here's like the, here's the torso and profile right here. You get like this kind of curve for the spine. And then the ribcage is kind of angled that way. And the pelvis is angled that way. So like the front of the pelvic dish is kind of going to be... If you're just standing neutral, it's generally going to... Like if you didn't have any skin on, you'd be able to like see the pelvic dish tilted towards you basically. So that's all, this is, this is like, the pelvic dish is where all your guts and your intestines go, basically. Mm -hmm. They're kind of held in a bowl. So we do know that this thing is going to be tilted towards us, but like, it's not too far off, too like terribly out of the ballpark compared to the stuff down below. Like this is like... So we can kind of infer that like this is like closer to a horizon line. This is probably closer on the horizon line right here, somewhere here. So all that's happening here is this thing is probably tilting towards us. That's just a guesstimate. Mm -hmm. That's just a ballpark guesstimate of what's going on there. And there's, there's like little little kind of things to keep in mind when analyzing these things because like uh, uh, very often with these studies that you're looking at, there's the person who made them has a little bit of like perspective and 3D space information built into them. Not always though.
But we'll be going more into perspective in the future too. I want to do another perspective kind of workshop class or something. Um, at the very least, I would say that like, try to find opportunities to, pra to practice bits and pieces of perspective. I mean, a lot of these that I've put together have like this is probably not going to be the best because, like, look at this right here. This is definitely not work. This is definitely not like accurate perspective going on there. <laughs> There's so, and I would say even the way that the feet are placed here is very wrong, but the overall figure itself is great. I'd say. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's there's stuff you can kind of infer a little bits of perspective-ish information in this figure. This is a 3D model, so there's definitely perspective going on, and that that one's a um, very very like kind of stylized comic booky, some fake some fakery going on in it with its perspective. But this is a very nice study of a figure in perspective. Yeah, uh, the main thing is now um, as we start like dipping more into walking through step by step of like constructing these parts of anatomy, we'll be able to utilize them more basically for creating more dimensional studies and utilize this stuff in dynamic poses a little bit more so yeah with that uh, i'm gonna one thing sorry to interrupt yeah. uh one thing that i uh, i find helpful to keep perspective in mind is uh, as a warm up each day, doing some uh, ghosted planes or some boxes like uh, drawbox.com yeah. instructs, mm -hmm. it's quick. Uh, it doesn't get you boring. But like uh, I personally think that studying linear perspective can get sometimes, uh, and it does help over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also say that you can do something like what I'm doing on screen right now, which is like. Maybe even take a ruler, but you can do it freehand too, of like create like a vanishing point and start like creating some planes in space or some forms in space. Like this is a, this is one point perspective right here that I'm doing. It's not anything special either. And eventually like your sketching habits will develop that you can like kind of loosely imply that we're or kind of visualize where a vanishing point's going to about about where a vanishing point's gonna have gonna be without physically drawing it and it doesn't have to be perfect. Like if you see Kim Kim Jung Yi stuff, if you actually like really like map out where his perspective lines are going to, they're kind of like they're all over the place, but there's enough like there's enough of a sense of un understanding of how perspective works. Mm. And what he draws so that it has it feels like it has integrity to it yeah i got even, that feeling even, from him. Even, like even like there's a lot of wonky there's a tremendous amount of wonky stuff happening in kim jong gi stuff if you really look at it like mm. it's just that there's so much stuff that is working and that is that like, has a underlying sense of this is somebody who studied this thing really in depth they don't necessarily they aren't like perfectly copying the thing but they understand it enough to play with it uh, and have it hold up. And that's kind of what we want to get to with this stuff. There's no shortcut to it. You've just got to just keep at it and you'll get a little bit better at it bit by bit. Whether it be anatomy or any of the other subjects that we're probably going to get into studying because uh, I actually want to do more than just figures in these little study sessions. We're going to be getting into composition and other things in the future, too, for sure. Because we have to place our figure. If we were going to do a comic or we're going to do storyboard or animation, we often have to place the figures in an environment. And, well, we kind of need to have to draw an environment at some point. Okay, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, oh, that, that that helps load. That helps loads. Yeah, kind of gives I, an idea of where I need to focus my my stuff a bit. 
uh, in the future, I'll recommend like more stuff. Like I, I pointed out Bridgman tonight and Michael Hampton in particular, but and I in the future I'll go more into detail on like some anatomy books and stuff that I can recommend. But uh, let's kind of leave it at this for now, because like I'm still getting warmed up. I'm still getting my head back in the game, and the point of doing these sessions is to like I don't have to be, I don't have to be a hundred percent prepped. Like it's just kind of study and vibe. Get people in. Get people to get some mileage in. And the cool thing is, is like having done this tonight. When I come back to this same subject tomorrow, I'll be stronger at it. Like that's a that's a that is the that is the positive feedback loop of of, of doing study habit stuff. Mm. That also applies to when you're working through a personal work project. And I've got a couple personal work projects I'm going to be. Starting to tackle this week. Love this really this this uh this kind of old master etching right here. Very very wrinkly stylization of the um, of the body, like something like this. Like a, you can see me doing kind of like a really gesture drawing slash simplified forms breakdown of. Uh, of the same ideas that we were going over yeah. earlier. Can you like check really fast the blocking that I've made for my previous post into sure. the drawing core and shit? Yeah. Give me a sec. Oh yeah, one of the things we're gonna be going over is anatomical landmarks. We didn't really, we only touched on them a little bit. Uh, there's, I think there's some of them are mentioned in some of these, but like the, one of the big ones that we, uh, ran across tonight was, um, the corners of the pelvis, the upper corners of the pelvis. There's also the pitted crotch, and there's several others on the, um, on the, the legs themselves. But we'll be getting more into that next week. Or, uh, or maybe on Friday, because if we're doing quick sketch legs on Friday, it might be good to use the lamp to... Um, to teach people about the land, to teach people more about the landmarks, so we can use them as kind of a GPS guide system. Because like you can actually, like, I've seen it, I've seen it, I've done it and seen it done before, where you can actually like literally like make a drawing based on where you plot your landmarks, stuff like something like this. Those little kind of like, like reconnect uh, dots sort the of way, thing. The way usually people that are doing inking from scratch um, working. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm going to take a look at the, the Discord thing that you guys mentioned. Let's see here. Let's say uh, bead list. Like, I do see some good stuff going on here, but I'd say definitely be less timid. Uh, like, I think the front of the knee should be, I think the front of the knee should be more facing over this way more. In that case, that's my instinct there. And the kneecap should maybe be, the knee cube should be a little bit better defined. But you're, got, you're getting the right idea. I think this is working pretty well. There's some proportional issues, but whatever. I'm still getting vibing on this. It's really kind of tricky sometimes. It takes, uh... It's going to take practice and observation and like... Um, doing a lot of, a lot of like... Uh, but it, like it, at, some, at some point I'm going to want to do like a copy... I'm going to do want to do some copy studies. Uh, where I spend like an hour or two on the, the same drawing, really going slow uh, and stuff, where I really pay attention and try to get like the angles of stuff right and so on. And I go back and I make error fixes and things like that. But that's going to come later. I kind of need to work myself up to to do that. Like the visual, the visual memory part. The visual memory part of my brain needs to be warmed up and engaged. Anyway, so we are getting a little bit late on time tonight. Like I said, though, if you are looking for um, continuing studying, 
after you get done here, I would recommend going to Pro going to Proko's YouTube and like or just search on um Proko leg. Searching on YouTube for like Proko leg or whatever, and there's plenty to dig through. Uh, I think the Proko yo oh, look at that somebody made a Proko legs anatomy playlist right here. Uh, there's also a bunch of anatomy for artists videos, you can probably dig, uh, playlists for Proko that they made, but there's a lot to go through for for legs, legs and feet for him. Don't skip leg day. Like it, yeah. And Ethan Becker's got one here where it looks like he does go through go through legs at some point, a little bit. He might give some interesting tips. Oh look, there's a George Bridgman study right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, it's Bridgman foot. Right there. If you notice, like he's he's like he's not directly copying it either. He's actually changing the angle that the uh, study is being done at. Seeking. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a here's a good. This one is actually using a really. The, see, if you want to get a good like perspective exercise, this one would be fantastic. This this one is one that I actually might want to do myself because this is a really like linear perspective, academic perspective kind of approach to the getting like the angle of the pelvis. Yeah, it's a lot of good stuff. So anyway, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, we're going to call it a night. Uh, we'll be meeting again next Friday and also on Saturday. Uh, Saturday is going to be a little bit less of, of a formal animation class th for this week, at least. Uh, we'll probably be we'll probably be doing we'll be doing some kind of animation study. Maybe maybe it might be an an, an anatomy animation study, but we'll see. It'll be something neat that will content, kind of maintain continuity with the warm-ups that we've been doing this week. So anyway, yeah, thank you for coming. Good night. Awesome.